Hello, oh, um, everybody. Um, this is uh, uh, the uh, fifth uh, session of our weekly Siegel Talks. It's a uh, Friday um, already. And um, my name is Frank Henschke. I'm here from the Siegel Theater Center in New York City um, at the Graduate Center CUNY. And uh, we have uh, been um, holding talks this week, you know, with our theater artists from New York, but also from around the world to see um, what uh, is on their mind, what's going on, um, to try to make sense and what they think about making arts in these times of uh, Corona. And um, we had in the very beginning, Taylor Mack and Kirsten Martin from Here Arts Center, who introduced us to the brilliant idea of tailors of uh, trickleupnyc.org, a kind of Netflix uh, screaming platform um, where you pay $10 a month and then uh, the money will go to New York artists to support their work. And you have access to over 40, 50 videos. And of course, the library will be growing. I think it's a great way to put it together. And, um, and both of them shared uh, their work and uh, their lives. Uh, we then spoke to uh, friends and colleagues from Hong Kong and China, Mok Chiu Yu and uh, Shu Yi Liao, a choreographer, and Han Shen Fan, who spoke about uh, the situation in Hong Kong and in China. And China, where it seems to getting, be getting better, but a lot of work still will be going online in Hong Kong, where there are so many worries already about the role of the artist in, um, in their time and in their society, how that will change when that is over, what the hurdles they will face in their uh, 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 strive for artistic freedom and and uh, work we had the great also Thomas Ostermeyer joining us from Berlin and Thomas was uh, uh, calling us from his apartment in Schöneberg and telling us uh, to um, use the time to prepare especially also for young artists to uh, um, read to know they said it will all be over at a certain time there is the next generation of theater makers will be coming and this is a moment perhaps to to think about uh, what we are doing. Also, he said, make sure this is not uh, a fatalistic thinking comes in. This is, makes no sense. There's no bigger meaning, no bigger picture. Um, we should not uh, be <clears throat> become um, um, uh, in any way uh, distracted by it and stay sober and just say, this is something we have to deal with and we will, but still it's a time to think about life and death. He said, theater is always on the side of life. We both incorporate as the great young Kotz said, theater is that space between the living and the dead, but we celebrate both. And now we don't have what we normally have, life encounters, we don't have bodies on stage, we um, are confined to our home. So what, everything that theater is about is not happening and we have to find a way to, to deal with it. Um, yesterday we had uh, a great uh, Marco and Hermana from Teatro delle Albe in Ravenna in Italy. Um, they say they live like monks, um, they get up at 12 noon work for eight hours on their read, write, and then watch four or five hours videos and uh, uh, films and talk and eat. And they have been doing this for two months. And they say they also feel it's a little bit like a field uh, of a farmer, which now has to rest a little bit and has to air. And that's also trying to reinvent their work and they're terribly missing being on tour going uh, out where they are supposed to be. And with us to today, we have one of the great masters um, of contemporary theater and performance uh, globally. Um, this is Toshiki Okada with his great company Shellfish, who has been many times at the Siegel. We are uh, collaborators. One of the first times I think he came to the US, the very first one actually was at the Playwrights Exchange. And he has really put a, a stamp on the uh, uh, contemporary uh, work uh, that is of significance for the global community. He acts locally but he thinks globally and works globally. And I think um, uh, we are very um, fortunate and happy to have uh, Toshiki here um, with us. Um, he also moved his family away uh, from Tokyo after the Fukushima uh, uh, event. And his work has been engaging with the ideas of perhaps of an end of times and of disasters, ecological disasters, and how what we have to focus on. And so Toshiki, welcome first uh, here. What time is it now and where are you? Yeah, it's uh, 1 a.m. here in Japan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, usually it's time for me to go to bed, but now, yeah, it's my pleasure. <laughs> and where are you right now? Are you in Tokyo? Are you in uh, your family's home? Where are you? Yeah, now I'm in the city of Kumamoto which is, uh, yeah, uh, the far away from uh, Tokyo, the where, the, yeah, the, my house with my family is. 
So who is with you in your family right now, who is in the building? Uh, yeah, my wife and uh, two kids, and, uh, mm -hmm. 16, 16 years old boys and uh, uh, 20, 20, yeah, and, uh, 20, 12 years old daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. my daughter is uh, going to enter uh, uh, junior high school. Yeah, yeah, because April is uh, the, uh, the, the time the back to school in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, maybe, yeah, but uh, yeah, seemingly uh, the school is still being closed yeah, for a while. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure if her entrance ceremony uh, will be held mm -hmm. or not next week. I don't know. So how do you spend your days now? Well, how, what do you do? You are one of the great directors who directs and travels. Is on, you, you just were in New York at the Skirball. Um, Jay Wegman got you there with your latest work. Yeah. I know the, the set even got stuck in I... custom <laughs> during the crisis. Yes, yes. Um, it was... You were lucky to have that shown just before the curtains fell down. So um, what, what are you doing? How do you spend your day? <laughs> These days, yeah, I'd, uh, like like uh, many people i'm also uh stuck in to my home mm -hmm. and uh but it's good uh for me as a writer yeah because it's good uh, to write and uh, like sure. some things yeah so i'm almost always uh, struggling uh, uh, between uh, me as a, a theater director yeah, who has to uh, go out often and uh, me as a writer who need to uh, isolation for a while in a way. Yeah, so yeah, most, most of the cases uh, the, I have to be more director than mm -hmm. a writer. It's a, uh, yeah, I like it, but at the same time it's problem, but uh, yeah, these days it's uh, special. Yeah, because it's, yeah, I'm, I can be, I can be in a very good situation as a writer. Yeah, it's interesting. And uh, yeah, and uh, I'm uh, writing and uh, cooking very much every day. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, but uh, I was supposed to start the rehearsal for my next project. Yeah, from next week. Yeah, but uh, we already, uh, uh, so uh, in order to realize that, that I would uh, that I would go to Tokyo to rehearse. Yeah, but uh, we already uh, decided to change the rehearsal online. Online, So yeah, I'm going to stay here in Kumamoto for a while. So yeah, that I'm not sure when uh, I'm going to uh, yeah, go to Tokyo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So before we come to your online rehearsal, so how do you write? What time do you get up? Do you write at the computer by hand? Do you have a writing room? How does it work when Toshiki Okada writes? Uh, I, I'm doing a boss, hand writing, and uh, uh, writing on computer. Mm -hmm. mm, it, it depends on, mm, yeah, my, my feeling. Yeah, but uh, mm, most of the cases I'm lighting uh, on my laptop. Yeah, but to elaborate, uh, yeah, I, yeah, and, uh, yeah I, I like to do it in handwriting. In handwriting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do it in the mornings, in the nights, or? Uh, I'm I'm morning person, so I'm not good at uh, 
yeah, at uh, yeah, awaking until late at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, mm, yeah, at yeah late afternoon. Yeah, that I usually am exhausted, so it's not already time for me to write things. So mm -hmm. I, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, often write things almost. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have the morning. Mm -hmm. You're close to a window. What do you see when you look out of your window? <laughs> now, yeah, the, mm -hmm. there is a tree, some trees, mm -hmm. yeah, by window. But now it's very mid, yeah, over midnight. It's all midnight. So, yeah, yeah it's just dark. Now. So what what do you write at the moment? If you can share a little bit, what's on your mind? What are the sentences? What is the what is the work you're writing right now? Like yesterday or today? <laughs> yeah, the, my next production is uh, uh, it's uh, kind of my own way of uh, no theater. You know, no mm -hmm. no theater. It's uh, uh, ancient. Uh, performing art style in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's um, kind of a musical play. Mm. Yeah, I I like the concept of no theater because yeah, in original no theater, mm, mm -hmm. yeah, it has a very good way of uh, having the character as a ghost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I like. <laughs> Yeah, because the putting protagonist character as a ghost uh, can help uh, can help the make the story um, a kind of a uh, political because um, that, that, that of course ghost is uh, some uh, human being who uh, died already and uh, that death has of course some a specific reason. The most of the cases, the reason you know, of someone's death is related, relating to some uh, political or social situation like war or uh, yeah, the, yeah, such as war. So then the if uh, you can describe someone's death, yeah, and the, in, in original no theater, uh, the one very interesting thing is that the ghost can tell uh, the how how they died by themselves. It's very interesting, yeah, because human being cannot do it, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, only only ghost can do it, and they they do in no theater, which I like. Yeah, so um, now, um, yeah, the, I like to um, quote that kind of style the no theater has. So now I'm uh, uh, writing my own way of uh, contemporary way of no theater. The one protagonist is, uh, you know, the uh, architect, female architect Zaha Hadid. Yeah, the, she, uh, she was supposed to be designer of a uh, new stadium in Tokyo for mm -hmm. Olympic games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this year, yeah, but as you know, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, it was postponed already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, she, uh, she, her, her design uh, once uh, was the selected. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she won the competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, after that, uh, it was yeah, her design was uh, cancelled due to so many uh, uh, the problematic process. So yeah, and uh, after her design was denied, uh, the, she passed away. She passed away. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. she already. <clears throat> so, yeah, so uh, that's why I'm thinking about the uh, putting a heart on the protagonist of the my way of no play. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So these days, you... yeah, these days I'm uh, uh, writing the text for it. Mm-hmm. So the protagonist, a female designer, architect, her yeah. design was rejected for the Tokyo Olympics that got canceled anyway. She died, and she comes back yes. uh, as it goes. Um, did you have that idea already before the uh, Corona crisis, the COVID nineteen crisis hit? Uh, yeah, uh, the, that idea uh, of uh, the putting Zaha on the protagonist of my no play. Yeah, it was what uh, I already had, of course, before uh, the, mm-hmm. that. Yeah, that uh, yeah pandemic situation is was coming. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. So. Um... How is your mood? Do you feel as a creative artist as you are? Do you, are you influenced by this? Uh, do you feel uh, that situation is having an imprint of your work, or do you feel no? I'm still working as I always did. Yeah, of course I'm affected in yeah several different ways. One. It's, uh, mm, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, now mm, I already had mm, several days of uh, online rehearsals. And uh, yeah, it was my first time. I never tried online rehearsal before. Tell us a bit, how do you do online rehearsal? <laughs> yeah, now by far I did just, uh, uh, doing a workshop with uh, actors. It was uh, the, his or uh, her first time to uh, work with me. So I need to share, uh, we need to share the, uh, my idea yeah, while they're creating theaters. Yeah, so yeah, I was afraid if it works online, online rehearsal works or not, but Maybe it does. Mm. How, so, so how many actors and they are all at home in their room and you have them in a Zoom meeting or how does it? Yeah, 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 yeah. How many and, uh, people? It was, yeah, it was kind of Zoom meeting by far. I, I did the online meeting just uh, with only one actors. Mm-hmm. Mm. So the, I don't know and uh, I'm curious about what happened if uh, the, yeah, several, Several actors are uh, uh, joining at the same time. So right, right now you do one-on-one meetings with the actors yeah. about the role you are creating. Yeah. Spe- specifically for the actor. Mm. Yeah, but uh, in a way, I feel that Zoom, yeah, Zoom meeting might be, um, might be better uh, to have. Uh, atmosphere at uh, discussion. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, but, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's like- So you mean the atmosphere of a Zoom meeting adds to the message and the content and the general atmosphere of the play? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, because in screen, and uh, everyone is uh, uh, obviously equivalent. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the, uh, there is no um, kind of a hierarchy mm-hmm. of uh, yeah, the, like a uh, director is top and uh, yeah, like this. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and uh, everyone can see the, yeah, yeah, any other person is, uh, uh, talking or doing something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it seems flat in a way. Mm-hmm. So okay. I hope it's, it works to, yeah, make the, uh, the atmosphere of uh, rehearsal 
uh, kind of flat equivalent or uh, democratic. Mm -hmm. oh, that's an interesting thought. I never thought about it, that Zoom in a way adds to a um, <laughs> democratic distribution, you know, of um, artistic engagement in company meetings because everybody has the same space on the computer and the same yeah, time, yeah. hopefully, um, um, uh, to talk. And uh, I know René Polish in, uh, in Germany, mm -hmm who is now taking over the Volksbühne after Kastorf, he always said that uh, uh, people write so many plays about revolution and changes, but the way they produce their work, you know, it's dictatorial, authoritarian. There's the director who says he, he even changes this and that from the writers, whatever, but there's no, if you don't have a kind of a democratic distribution of work on stage, how can you advocate with your work um, what ultimately the artistic goal is. So he distributes text to the actors, actors write text, he arranges them and um, puts them up. So that's an interesting thought that perhaps Zoom will introduce um, um, something that after the digital machines entered of light and sound and yeah. uh, that them created uh, uh, an equal distribution of things we see on stage, <laughs> that yeah. now Zoom will actually perhaps add something. I never, never thought about this. So. Um, so do you give actors already lines over the uh, internet, uh, uh, over the Zoom? Do, do you have to send it to them up front and they speak a monologue for you or how does it work? Uh, yeah, and, uh, <clears throat> by far, I did just uh, uh, doing a workshop and uh, my way of a workshop is uh, uh, always, always the same. Tell uh, us a yeah. little bit. Uh, we know yeah, yeah, that yeah, maybe yeah, not yeah, all of course. our listeners do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, I'm always uh, asking the uh, actors to tell uh, the how your current house or the house you used to live is like. So, the, yeah, if you ask that uh, you are telling the, yeah, your house, like, uh, yeah, the entrance is here. Tell us about yes. your house, where you grow up. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Where did there's you grow a hallways up? and uh, the bathroom is on your right side like this. So, yeah, so the, yeah, if, yeah, when you, yeah, talking about your house, uh, yeah, almost spontaneously, you have to move your body like this. Yeah, so, and uh, I'd like, uh, yeah, that we'd like to see the why you're moving like this. And the because uh, the, when you try to talk something, you when you're talking about your house, you have to have the imagination uh, that the house in your mind. And that, that kind of imagination can make your body move like this. So yeah, the, the, my basic and the first idea is uh, that how much imagination can make your body. In other words, the imagination can choreograph you. Yeah, so I like to find movement in, yeah, the, based on that kind of ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I need to, yeah, so you yeah, see the gestures yeah. the actors make yeah. and then transfer them to lines. So um, the ghost, is that a ghost-like presence that already of an actor on your screen? Is, he, is, is the person already, is it real? <laughs> is it not? Is it a ghost? Even if he's alive? <laughs> it's interesting, right? I never, <laughs> I've never thought like this, but uh, yeah, but at the same time, I'm almost always, feel the similarity of the idea of a ghost and the idea of actors, idea of theater. Yeah, because the, for me, theater, yeah, theater is uh, putting something imaginary on uh, some uh, physical space. So, yeah, that might, yeah, and the uh, materiality, reality, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the kind of fiction or the imaginary things uh, can, can be overlapped 
on yeah the physical space or the mm -hmm. some uh, the, yeah, ma uh, the yeah material materiality okay. yeah so and uh, yeah so the experience the yeah experience both the materiality and the imagine yeah imaginary yeah. imaginary fiction mm -hmm. for me it's theater. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. It's also Marvin Carlson's great book on ghosting and how closely it's related to, to actually that we sit in a dark room mm -hmm. um, in the theater, the light goes off and a Greek army supposedly is right side on stage or not. We imagine it. We, dead people who no longer exist talk to us with someone who's living. We believe it and we don't still know it's not real. Mm -hmm. So there is a, something that perhaps opens our minds and creates yeah. a, a, a space for imagination and mm -hmm. rethinking and the tra Japanese tradition of, 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 of ghosts <laughs> and the no place, which is so, so in the stories is so significant. So it is a ghostly time in a way also. Do you feel, and, uh, um, um, and Peter Eckersall so send that in as a question, you know, they said our reality is now, now um, stranger than fiction or more, more unthinkable that perhaps we have ever thought you know, how how can we create theater that um, mm. deals uh, with this how do we react how do you think um, um, theater artists can or should react to it or you as an individual artist <laughs> yeah mm, i think always uh always uh reality uh yeah, reality and uh, uh, fiction uh, juxtaposed. Yeah, always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Of course, now uh, things seems to be much clearer. And uh, yeah, how reality? Yeah, that I I can understand. Uh, if you can see the yeah reality seems to be much stronger than fiction but uh, mm, but for example I I think I we can uh, think like think like this that of course virus is visible we can we can't see that so that if uh, we are afraid of a virus, It means uh, that we can have some uh, fictional imagination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, mm, that there, yeah, you can see any files around you. Yeah, it's mm. invisible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, yeah, we have to. We have to manage, you no, know, taking balance, yeah, between uh, reality or fiction, or uh, in other words, uh, the we have to have some imagination. So, um, the if, yeah, and uh, you can, you can be, uh, you can care of uh, mm, how uh, that what is uh, taking your imagination i mean yeah i mean for example mm, it's different story but uh, for example mm, that te for example terrorism terrorism is one way uh, to control your imagination in uh, fear. Mm -hmm. mm. So, yeah, but uh, if, mm, yeah, but uh, sometimes we have to, mm, we have to care, we have to uh, manage my way of uh, using my imagination. Mm -hmm. in different way. I mean, other, otherwise, the, uh, my imagination is taken only by fear. So, yeah, then uh, the, we, 
we need to find an alternative way of uh, yeah, either taking your own imagination. So in a way, in I believe fiction is a very strong uh, option. If you can, yeah, and uh, if you have uh, some imagination, which is good, yeah, you can um, manage. Yeah, you can manage things. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so it's, ha it's what's happening all the time, always. Yeah, yeah, but in these days, no, the, yeah, at the yeah, age of coronavirus, it's good. For, yeah, in a way it's good uh, the, for everyone, of course, including artists to yeah, contemplate that kind of idea uh, the, in comparison with ordinary days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I believe I believe something new and uh, something stronger, new idea, uh, yeah, can be appeared, uh, yeah, due to this situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How is the mood uh, in Japan on the streets in your town, or I don't know if you work shortly in Tokyo? So how how do you describe it among artists? How is it? Uh, now. I'm not in Tokyo, so um, yeah. But uh, as far as I heard or the I I read or the I see the information from the media, um, yeah, uh, people are very divided. Some people are very um, careful. Mm -hmm. Mm. But at the same time, there are so many people uh, who are going out. Uh, yeah, and, uh, as usual. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, because um, yeah, because government government is not uh, uh, ordering um, of withdrawing. Yep, yep. Mm, yeah. It's unlike unlike uh, Europe or uh, states. Mm -hmm. mm. Tell us a bit. I know you were a strong critic. You gave a strong critique of the Japanese government after Fukushima. You decided to move out of Tokyo because of that, and your work engages with these and vital environmental questions. Also, is that a Corona time we live in now? The COVID nineteen virus. Is that? Do you see that in a in a strain, in a, in a, in a, in a chain of events uh, that uh, um, will and should have happened and that you kind of said, I'm gonna get out of Tokyo, I'm gonna move there to have my family safe early on, but I will focus in my work to highlight this. So is your work influenced and what's your idea about all of this? What's your, mm. what are your thoughts? Yeah, these days I often, uh, compare how the days was in after Fukushima disaster and uh, the current situation. Yeah, of course there are um, some similarity, but uh, at the same time there are so many um, difference. Uh, in a way, uh, yeah, the yeah Fukushima, yeah, Fukushima nuclear power plant incident was a very big event uh, for everyone, but of course uh, for me too. Yeah, because um, we 
decided the yeah, big change, we moved. Yeah, we changed the, our place to live. Yeah, and uh, yeah, but uh, then uh, we were very afraid you know, of the uh, influence you know, of radioactivity, especially to uh, my kids. Yeah, but at the same time, I had to, um, I had to see. So there are so many people uh, who had a different idea from mine. Yeah, there are so many people who didn't care, didn't care about that. So that I had to feel a, a sort of tension of uh, my, my mindset and uh, uh, the other people's mindset. It was very strong and uh, it made me exhausted very much. Yeah, mm, I, I wonder uh, the, how it is, how it is now. It's similar or different. Yeah, because now uh, I have no chance to compare because um, I have yet to uh, visit the Tokyo area. Yeah, but if I were, yeah, if I were go to Tokyo, maybe I'm going to uh, experience something similar, maybe. How did the uh, Fukushima disaster um, change your work as an artist? Mm. Biggest one for me, it was uh, like, mm -mm. it made me realize the a uh, sense of division in society. Mm -hmm. mm. In fact, yeah, to be honest, uh, I've never felt like this before uh, Fukushima incident happened. It was very big for me. Yeah, and uh, yeah, since then I, yeah, I started uh, to yeah work uh, based on yeah that kind of a, yeah sense of division in society. Um, maybe give me which play was the first one you did after? Ah, the first okay. one is the play. Uh, the title was uh, current location. Yeah, it yeah that the current location was almost a direct description about that kind of a, a sense of division or the tension between uh, peoples who have different uh, ideas. Yeah, about. Mm, about the current situation. Mm. Mm. To, to talk about the political, do you feel an artist uh, has a role to play in the society on the political side? Uh, you, the way, how did the government react and how you reacted towards this? Is there something you feel uh, is a responsibility? Mm. <laughs> uh, Yeah, and, uh, unfortunately, I don't think of uh, my government as uh, some agent, agent who can take responsibility. So, yeah, so the 
we have to we have to make one make my way and, uh, yeah by myself of course yeah and as an artist uh, i i feel i have to yeah i have to make some fiction as i mentioned yeah for yeah, yeah because for me the fiction i uh, can be Mm, can be alternative reality or uh, fiction can be mm, uh, something uh, that is that is that is uh, uh, yeah that enable make tension between reality or the, yeah, the, if you can have, yeah, the, some, some fiction and uh, you can, yeah, the, and the fiction work can work uh, in a way, in a way that it's, uh, mm, yeah, that can be kind of lively to yeah, reality. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that kind of way of thinking came to me uh, the after after Fukushima incident. It was it was another big change happened to me. And uh, yeah, the Fukushima incident uh, gave me. Where were you of the day of the Fukushima incident when it happened? Uh, then I was uh, in my house with my family. Yeah, it, uh, yeah the, then my house was uh, kind of a suburb in uh, Tokyo. Yeah, so it was, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit interesting, the story, uh, the day uh, the big earthquake happened. Yeah, it was my son's my son's birthday, so that's why uh, the, I was in my house. The, otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, otherwise I would be a different place because my company was uh, supposed to uh, show my piece in different city. Yeah, but uh, I asked the. Uh, uh, technical directors to yeah to make my arrival day there uh, yeah a day later or two yeah yeah because I I wanted to be my family then mm -hmm. mm. yeah so yeah the, then the earthquake happens and, uh, yeah but it was good and, uh, I I, I could be with my family when the yeah, earthquake could happen. But on the next day, uh, the, I joined the, my company. There, it was, uh, yeah, it was local city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, and then it was, uh, yeah, it was uh, on the television in uh, my, in the dress room of the theater, and, uh, we watched the uh, explosion of the uh, uh, nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, in a way, perhaps for the world, it is um, something maybe not on the scale of the nuclear explosion, but right now what is happening is these kind of a, um, of a global um, a disaster. So I know you then went on with your work. You also work at the Munich Kammerspiele a lot your play was selected for the Theatertreffen uh, in Berlin. Um, of course, it can't be shown. The Theatertreffen has been canceled. Did you bring your, 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 your experiences, your sensitivities of, from that time of disaster and the time of uh, 
death experience is close to us as the virus is among us everywhere in every community it is um, we cannot pretend it's not so in a way there is something similar invisible like almost like the radioactive you know emissions in a way did you bring that to your work on the Kammerspiele in Munich tell us a little bit about uh, the, the the work you did there and uh, if you felt uh, uh, that there is um, um, something that formed you that also uh, became part of your tools <laughs> Yeah, the, I, I made four pieces in München Kammerspiele. So almost all of the four productions had a subject uh, which uh, the, that relates to a problematic situation in Japan. Yeah, it, Tell us. yeah, it, yeah, Tell yeah. Us uh, okay, the one thing is uh, uh, precarious labor situation. Uh, the next one is... Uh, First was on labor, the labor situation? Yeah, labor situation, yeah. work, mm -hmm. yeah. Work and labor? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah working situation. And the uh, next one, yeah, next one is how, uh, how economic situation in Japan was uh, uh, going south since, yeah, yeah, the decades, yeah, since decades, yes. Or the next one is uh, Japanese people, uh, Japanese people's tendency who are not interested in having sex. Mm -hmm. But uh, my latest one is dealing with the subject of the, uh, uh, it's called hikikomori. Hikikomori means that there are people who are withdrawing in a house. They are not uh, interacting with society. Mm -hmm. mm. Which is of course an interesting subject and I wanted to bring that up. There's also the play of uh, you see Sakati on, on the attic and your work on this of young people also who do not leave the house and what it means to the mind. But right now, no, at least in Europe and in the US, mm -hmm. people cannot leave their mm -hmm. house. Um, tell us a little bit of, uh, uh, about uh, that, that work, what you do and what you see, what it means, what it stands for that people voluntarily already didn't leave their house, but it had consequences mm -hmm. for their lives. Uh, yeah, the, in terms of the uh, uh, hikikomori problem, uh, I think the biggest reason why uh, there are so many people uh, who are not uh, uh, connecting to society is because uh, there are so many pressure in a society. So, in, yeah. Yeah, so once uh, you fail, or the, yeah, you, uh, yeah, you confront with some very strong pressure, so it, yeah, it, uh, this, it can discourage you. So I totally, I totally understand that so many people are giving up their, yeah, uh, the, yeah, giving up to uh, keep the interaction with the society. So they yeah. are putting, yeah, yeah, putting the, themselves the, into inside. Yeah, I think I remember your play Enjoy where played with that idea that if you're 30, you don't have a steady job yet, you are an outcast, you have failed your life, you're kind of ashamed and people, many of them go back to their homes, really live in the attics, don't have contact with the outside world, somehow in a similar situation now, and of course it is devastating to the mind, but also a, a sign of a society where, where things perhaps are not handled that should be. Do you, do you have trust in your government at all and as an artist? Tell us a little bit, what is the relation of you, no, and the I don't. Mm, yeah, as I mentioned, 
they they don't seem to um, take any responsibility. So they don't. So they don't propose any um, yeah any practical idea. Yeah, by far. So yeah, that for yeah, for example, the government government says uh, that they they recommend not to go out on weekends, but uh, they don't say anything about how about uh, weekdays. Yeah, because mm. the yeah that they cannot they can't guarantee guarantee any money if yeah if they at home uh, go to business on weekdays. Mm. So, yeah, so at, uh, even now, um, <coughs> yeah, even now in Tokyo, uh, so many people on, uh, pack, uh, are packed <coughs> in, the, in train. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Yeah, so I can, I can uh, trust. Mm. No, you're really right. I mean, we heard Han Chen Feng and uh, who said, you know, that somehow it seemed like in China, it is relaxing, things are working. In Italy, when we talked to Armana and Marco, they're in the middle of it for two months, they haven't left the house, but perhaps in Japan, it hasn't fully arrived yet, you know, that you wash hands, you wear your mask, uh, limited mm. your contacts to three, four, five people stay at home. So another tsunami in a way of that virus <clears throat> is coming. It is already there everywhere. And um, it's a big, big question how society deals with it. So what are you, how do you keep yourself busy? I see behind you, these are these tapes. Um, do you, what do you read? What do you watch? And what music do you listen to? <laughs> mm. Some, yeah, the one, is the original original text no no praise? Say again. Uh, the original no text, which is written oh, the by no yeah yeah, the yeah. No So you go yeah, back yeah. to read the uh, four hundred yeah or what? Yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, that to be inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, mm, I read some. Yeah, I read some um, books, for example. This, what did you the, read? Yeah, one is, uh, you know, it, it is, uh, you know, Shock Doctrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I read them by Naomi Klein. Right, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, in a way, perfect time to read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and uh, mm, yeah, and some uh, Japanese philosophers' book. It is uh, yeah, which is uh, it was written more than more than fifty years before, but uh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, the, what he what what he was writing is still very uh, critic is uh, yeah looks like very com not, uh, contemporary. Tell, it tell seems like bit. what is he uh, thinking yeah. about? Him? Yeah, it's uh, mm, that how how uh, the Japanese way uh, Jap Japanese society is way you not. Know, uh making a decision is uh, um, complicated or the how uh, they are uh, good at the apo avoiding to uh, take 
responsi responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's very com complicated, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. So it's yeah, a, but it's... yeah, but it's still very. Um, yeah, working. Mm. I can read it like, yeah, as a uh, what's happening now. No. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you said you do a lot of cooking. So what do you what <clears throat> what do you do? <clears throat> what are your favorite things to do? Do you? Uh, uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, the, a couple of days before. Very nice vegetables uh, came to house, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it is coming from uh, it. It was coming from a uh, very good farm. They are mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the uh, the growing the vegetables in organic way, mm -hmm. uh, without any uh, the chemical things or the without mm -hmm. yeah, very in in very natural ways. So it was very good. So, uh, uh, nowadays I'm uh, yeah cooking as a simple way as possible mm -hmm. mm, because yeah make the yeah make the vegetables potentials <laughs> to, to come out yeah 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 to mm. yeah and, and how do you stay in contact with your family are they safe are they where's where are your where's your family um yeah almost all Ah, my mother, yeah, she's uh, uh, living in Yokohama. It's uh, mm -hmm. part of Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now I'm not uh, with her, yeah, but I'm often uh, contacting and uh, she's still fine. Mm. Yeah, but uh, she's, uh, yeah, but uh, she's uh, already uh, in her seventies, so uh, usually, yeah, usually, when I'm working in Tokyo, I'm staying at uh, her place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, mm, if mm, I'm I'm going to Tokyo to work, mm, yeah, soon. Yeah, maybe I I will have to find other place mm -hmm. uh, for me to stay. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, this time I don't like to mm -hmm. go to her place. Mm. Yeah, you don't want to to bring anything. Um, so tell us a bit at the end of we coming to the end of our time. But we ask you know if for young artists, young directors, writers, actors, what is your advice? You know what what do you think uh, they okay. should do mm. now, or what is the thing to do at the moment. Now, I'm excited in a way these days. Yeah, because now it's uh, a good chance to find new way to find a new theater. Yeah, the, for me, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, uh, theater is the way to produce some fiction and uh, put that put and a uh, way of putting some fiction on some uh, physical uh, space, but uh, some material on, on some materiality. Yeah, the, usually the theater can be done in theater as a building. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe that kind of frame of uh, thought about theater mm, uh, yeah, can be realized in a different way from uh, yeah, ordinary way of theater. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to think like this hard and uh, I want to find some new way of outputting the theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
yeah, that if I can have something to tell young artists, yeah, I recommend them to think like this mm -hmm. and find find something new, some something very new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. As Brecht said, the new times do need new forms um, of theater. Heiner Müller famously said, using Brecht without uh, yeah. criticizing it or, or changing something is treason. Mm -hmm. You have to come up with something new and this is a time. Yeah, Toshiki? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I, yeah. I, found, I found that what Brecht says 100% right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, Chishiki, thank you so much for staying up uh, so late. It must already be two o'clock uh, in Japan thank now. You, and the, and yeah. the ghosts, which for sure exist, <laughs> will come and visit you or might be around you now. And they might even <laughs> have been listening uh, to the talk and maybe gave you a will in your sleep, give you a good, good idea. So this brings uh, an end to our very first week um, here on the Siegel Talks. So we really would love to thank HowlRound. Uh, for being such a generous and great host, VJ and Thea, um, for doing this. My Siegel team uh, is May and, uh, and uh, San Young and uh, Jackie, the great Jackie, to help us out here. We're going to have a week. We're going to send out a release soon. We will have here from people from Egypt and, uh, and from uh, Lebanon, from Taiwan, uh, from uh, mm. Germany again. We will have Meredith Monk with us from Burkina Faso. And so really taking a, a, a view around the world. So please do stay tuned. Thousands of people listened in. We were surprised uh, by this. We had listeners from 17 countries. Uh, we hear so much from, uh, from politi politicians at the moment, uh, medical or the doctors and from virologists. So I think it is also time to really take a time to think, to listen hear from artists, and uh, which is very important. I think they also have a voice and a very significant one. And as you have been early warners, so um, as thank you also to all of our listeners out there. I know the times are um, complicated and difficult and also everybody is very busy and so much is going on online. So it's a big, um, big uh, 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 honor for us to have you with us. Again, look at also at Taylor Max initiative, uh, tricklabnyc.org one of the many many ideas there are many many others and we will have maybe like a whole week dedicated also to new york artists coming up so again thank you so much and uh, toshiki sleep well and uh, i trust everything will go well yes, I do. <laughs> and write rehearsals might add something that was not there before will be interesting to see and if something that might also add your change your way of working that you said there was something in mm -hmm. there or early phases we will all see nobody knows yet to what is about to come and uh, so this makes it for interesting times. So a uh, good night to uh, Toshiki and uh, thank you to all our listeners and uh, we all hope to see you uh, on Monday. Go to siegelcenter.org for the updated programming or to HowlRound. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you.